Hello and welcome! I'm Joanna Junak and this is GFN News on GFN.tv. In today's program, Alex Norcia will discuss e-cigarette legal battles in the United States. Thank you, Alex, for joining us today. Can you tell us what legal battles have recently caught people's attention? Sure. So, two weeks ago here, there was a uh, major development in a much-watched uh, legal case. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ordered the cases of both Triton and Naptasia to U.S.-based vapor companies who had filed um, petitions for review against the Food and Drug Administration be reheard in bank. Um, the FDA had originally denied their pre-market tobacco applications for um, their products, and they were among the first to file a petition in the U.S. Appeals Court, um, which had sided with the agency initially uh, in a two-to-one decision last July. Um, the new hearing will happen in the spring, though, and other legal appeals for other companies um, remain active in appeals courts throughout the rest of the country. What exactly does NBON mean? Sure. So in bonk hearings, which basically requires that a stable of judges weigh in on a case, are incredibly rare. Um, in the Fifth Circuit, uh, for instance, fewer than I think it's one percent of cases are heard or reheard rather in this in this fashion. So here, are sixteen judges ultimately voted on whether to rehear uh, Triton and Vaptasia's case, meaning at least nine of them uh, must have voted in favor. And why is this case so important? Yeah, so in, in many ways, it's seen as central to tobacco harm reduction. Advocates hope that flavored vapes, which of course, most adults find critical to quitting smoking, but none of which have received FDA authorization will remain available throughout the U.S. Additionally, there are many who urge that the market not be restricted to just a handful of, um, let's say, large, well-moneyed companies that have so far received authorizations, again, just for tobacco-flavored products, and that open system vapes, which are not popular with youth, uh, be judged differently. Can you explain how Triton and Vaped Asia got here? Sure. So... As I mentioned, uh, Triton and Vaptasia had submitted their PMTAs, um, as was required, um, by September 2020. And then the applications had to show in short that they would be appropriate for the protection of public public health, which has essentially become shorthand here for more likely helping adults to switch um, from smoking rather than introduce a new generation to nicotine. So in the next year, in September 2021, the FDA had denied all their applications. Um, by October, though, the, the Fifth Circuit had granted Triton and Vaptasia a full stay as the case went through the judicial judicial process, meaning they could continue selling their products. Um, and three judges included a, a scathing 20-page review, which they did not have to do, that argued the agency had essentially ignored their marketing plans and had demanded the inclusion of long-term like behavioral studies that Triton and Aptasia didn't know were required. So, some, surprisingly, though, um, following oral arguments in July, the court ended up siding with the uh, FDA. All of that, however, is negated now and the, the scene being presented is one in which the agency is sort of constantly shifting priorities and has not provided anything close to uh, what you might call a, a level playing field. Thank you, Alex. That's all for today. Tune in next time here on GFN TV or on our GFN TV podcast. You can also find transcriptions of each episode on the GFN TV website. Thanks for watching or listening. See you next time.